Hello and welcome to another video from Alberta Bushcrafter. Yes, I'm actually standing up for this one for, you know, for a few of you viewers of Axe I actually do ever do anything but sit down. But yeah, I'm actually standing up because in a previous video, I showed you guys the wonders of the old Coleman stove. Now remember, that is for, um, that's more for car camping, RV camping, canoe camping, and what have you. Not very portable. If you do have a large group though, and you've got a good case, uh, I found out the case that I have, the Cabela's triple stove case, which may or may not be made anymore. Uh, it'll actually carry one of the one liter bottles. I've even tried and it'll carry two of them really. So actually they're 946 mils, they're American, they're one quart bottles. You can actually carry two of those. So you've got someone who's packing a little lighter to share the load around. Yeah, you can carry the big Coleman with you plus a lot of the gear, have a lot more comfortable trip. But then again, that is, that's not so much survival, that is camping, you know, general camping and bushcraft. You know, with the video I did on the Coleman stove, this is another one. One of the nice things is to know how, to actually know how to keep one of these stoves up and do some basic repairs. And that's what this one is for today. Now we are gonna start with this. One of the things about Coleman stoves is, you know, they're not always too picky on food, fuel, but their fuel is the best. Coleman fuel runs in all the backpacking stoves I know, as well as the other white gas stoves. There are other cheaper fuels, notably one called Escort. That's up here, it's a Canadian tire uh, special. Uh, that stuff burns sooty as heck, it's terrible stuff. This stuff, even old, it burns well. So if you, you really get the Coleman genuine fuel. But one thing to watch out for, a better angle here. I have already unscrewed this cap. Because this cap isn't just childproof. It's one of these really annoying ones. It's practically adult proof as well. So, one of the tricks with these, now if you get the one quart 946 mil bottles, there is this. This is a fill tube. One half, one end fits right perfectly into the, uh, the opening for your tank. This is on all Coleman white gas stove. The other one, there's a similar opening on the can itself. However, I have noticed with the big ones, No longer fits because they no longer have that red insert in there. So this is good for the small ones. And when I get a small one, I will. What I use instead is a cheap little funnel. There's less than a buck. You can see there's actually a little screen in there. May help a little bit. But what I've also done is I've taken a zip tie. You just snug it down. It stays on your cap for filling. Like so. That was just because this is what I have lying around the house. You guys have also seen my Nalgene fuel bottles. I bring those with me because they have an integrated funnel in them. But, here we go. How to fill the stove. So this tank is almost full, ooh, and it was pressurized. That's the first thing to be careful of. Always hold it away from you when you undo this little cap. And these caps, well, we'll get to that in a minute. This is a very old Coleman stove, and there is a problem with it. So, notice actually the problem is not pressurization. So what you do, I'll get us a little lower here. Usually the old stove, what I like is it's actually got a flat end on it so you can just sit it on something. I see I'm holding the can. Coleman recommends when you start pouring, you pour it with the top up. Which if this was still full, I would be doing. But then again, 
I like to keep the funnel a little on an angle so it doesn't get an airlock in it. There's very little fuel in here. Yeah. And then just like so. Resist the temptation to just gush it right in there because as what just happened, it will overflow. It's got to go carefully back in here now because I'm filling another lantern with it anyways. If you happen to, do what I did, intentionally of course, and make it overflow, just, you know, shake it out away from you, away from any sources of flame, and there we go. So this is the tank. Again, like I was saying, the older tanks tend to sit very flat. The new ones are oval shaped and they've got a reservoir on the side so they're tougher to overflow. They're actually, Coleman figures out they're a lot safer, safer for you. But this one works fine for me and I do have a newer stove anyways. So that That is how to fill the stove, just carefully. Next, I'm going to show you the problem with this stove and lighting it, but a few other things you can do. Okay, the first thing, notice with almost all Coleman white gas products, is the cap. Now, here is a fairly new one. You can see this one's actually brass instead of, uh, looks like steel. And these actually, the old brass caps last longer. There is an O-ring inside there. If you can find the right size, it is replaceable. These do degrade. But sometimes it's better just to pay five bucks and replace the whole cap. So I carry a spare one of these. The older ones are a silver color. So if you need it, I don't actually need to on this. This is a very tight cap, but you can know you can tell if you need to replace the cap because fuel start dripping. Okay, now the second repair you may need to make, and these are general repairs you can make yourself, is to the pump assembly. If you find you're pumping and it does not actually pump, if it doesn't keep up pressure, if you're not getting any pressure in the tank, because remember with these it's usually about 40 pumps when they're full and they are plenty enough pressure to start. Anyways, I'll get a real close up here. I'm going to tighten this down. You can get, you know, the lever assembly, but normally, if you see in there, there's a little ring. All right? Let's see if anyone got that. All right, there it is. That ring comes off, and inside, at the end of a rod, and this is actually a diagram of the rod. Ooh, let's get some light there. There's actually a leather washer and a little clip and a, uh, a backing plate. So these again, about five bucks. Just follow the directions. I'm not going to take this apart right now because it's actually in great condition. I have actually replaced the pump cup washer. But all you do is, well, we'll do a bit. We'll just be a moment. So you pull your ring up, you take your pliers. I should be using some smaller pliers than this. And you ease off the ring. And now out comes the pump assembly. So you can see this is an old backing plate here, this metal one, and there's a clip there. So you'd pull the clip off, you'd replace the leather washer. This one is still supple and there's no signs of cracks. I, in, I inspect these about once a year in winter. You want to make sure you also retain the little spring here. But it's, this is a two minute job. You take these off, you put the new ones on, your pump is back good as new. 
it does I will say one thing to watch is it can be a little tricky to get the pump cup back in because it wants to swell up so you just ease it in right and the toughest part is lining up these two holes you can't even see those but they're there why I wasn't just kidding was I because they're tough you'll actually feel one grab and then you push it around you heard that click it'll click and that's now secure so there's big repair number two okay now here's the tank and generator assembly you'll see where my finger is there's this round hole what you want to do is you always want to make sure that the generator goes smoothly into that hole and there's usually a couple slots in the front make sure the tank you saw that make sure the tank clips in we'll show you that again lay it down first so you see those two slots generator goes in there and best to sit it down for this yeah it goes in those two slots and it's fairly stable okay now I have mentioned there's a slight issue with this stove so I'll just be a moment now the best way to light a Coleman stove so the barbecue lighter and thankfully with the especially with the Cabela's cases it has a nice little pocket for one of these here you go with the old ones you have to turn that little lever up and then you open it so usually you want to light the lighter as you open it now you can see the problem with this stove this is now on full and it isn't lighting like it should hmm makes me say I wonder what that could be Here. Look at that. It's lit, but it's not lighting at the burner. That's because there's a whole bunch of naphtha. And don't worry, I've done this before. There's a whole mess of naphtha actually underneath there. And that, I've been told from the guys at wonderful guys at wholesale sports is that is a bad generator that's the third part you want to replace so I have to shut this right down right now mm. and remove the tank so this is the generator it's actually the part that vaporizes the fuel so there's actually a little nut on the end there you can twist this off and you'd get a new one so we're just gonna leave that for a minute just let some of the uh, white gas evaporate here I'm not touching it right now or I'm gonna become an inferno so we'll be back in a few minutes okay and I found what the problem is and normally this little needle you can see the very very tip of it there it's supposed to move freely it's completely jammed so it's going to take a little bit of planning I'm actually going to come back to this tomorrow because it's getting a little dark tonight to do this and I will admit getting a little antsy about it because I've taken apart the other generator and there's some pretty fine parts and there's a certain specific sequence that needs to go in and or go together and I'm a little leery about that so I am gonna be very careful and tackle this when I'm a little fresher
Okay. It is white knuckle time because I actually have not done this. But, read the directions. This is the spare stove generator. Now, what's interesting is this is about 15, 20 bucks. So let's unwrap it. You can get, at least up in Canada, from a company called Princess Auto, if you go to their online store, they've actually got a replacement one of these that hooks up to a propane tank. So you can convert your old white gas stove to a propane stove. And it works beautifully. I will demonstrate one of those once I get it. But that is not today. So, ah, adult proof packaging on these. I lay this down so we can see it better. But yeah, there's a little needle in there you gotta be very careful of. Stick it there. So, the next thing you want to do, take a wrench, you can see the nut. Holding it away from you just in case there's there's always some residual gas in these tanks I've found. So this is a just a little crescent wrench. I prefer these to the uh, well the vice grips and so on. Off it comes. In fact, there we go. Hmm. That doesn't seem right. So this is an older generator. I am going to have to get the vice grips out after all. Because this whole tube has to come off. Be right back. Okay, so I found the problem. That's why these, I was fairly new at this and it's a new experience, but there was actually, inside the valve here, there was a piece of the original needle that had broken off. So I've actually taken this apart and cleaned it, but unfortunately it shortened the gap where the uh, other generator needle should have been, and as you can see, Oh yeah, that's cute, look at that. It uh, torqued the crap out of it. So, I am gonna pick up a new one of these. And this is now a repair for another day because all the stores are closed, but hey, live and learn. Well, that actually turned out, that whole exercise of replacing the stove generator turned out to be a bit of an exercise in frustration and I'm not going to say futility yet, but close enough. So this is the tank. You can see right here is the valve. All right, that's the valve. So I'm going to go through the motions of how to replace one of these stove generators and I'll explain what's going on with this one. One of the things to watch is that some of these Coleman tanks actually still have some residual fuel no matter how much you rotate them and try to empty them. So watch out for that. Don't blow yourself up. Generally, when you're replacing the generator, you first take the little needle, you unscrew the other needle that's in the, already in the valve. You would actually unscrew it carefully. You know, you could use vice grips if you need to, but there's a very fine thread on the end of that. Then what you do is first you would thread the needle into the new valve, or the old valve. And the second thing you would do is you would slide, so you got the needle here, and you'd actually slide the generator onto the valve. And then you would tighten that up. Now I can see the design hasn't changed much in 50 years because this is tightening on just fine. And you just tighten it till it's fairly snug. You don't need tape or anything. You don't want to over tighten it as you may have seen. And then you just test it out and see if it works. Tolerances are pretty fine on this. But now 
to this tank. That generator and needle valve in there were so crudded up with stuff that when I removed the outer shroud, it actually broke a piece of the needle off inside that valve. So that's now a major, major repair. I, uh, I'm a little disappointed, a little frustrated because uh, for one, I can't find a new valve for these by themselves and Coleman is terrible for answering emails and picking up calls or anything. Especially Coleman Canada. I called during all kinds of business hours and didn't even get a, you know, a person to speak to. So, yay Coleman. Thanks for looking out for the little guy. That's a mini rant. Anyways, neither can I actually get one of the tanks. I'm going to keep looking, maybe get a newer tank. So I tried my tank from my other stove and it worked. So we'll see. The burners in this are great and so on. This is a future project. Maybe repair this tank or get a spare. However, I said there was another option. That is this. When I was Christmas shopping, I'll get the box for you. There's a company I like called Mr. Heater. And let's see if we get some focus there. There it is. This is a propane converter for just such a stove. The way it works, here it is. As you can see that, there is a little spring on here. And there's your gas knob. Uh, there's a little mini regulator on the back and that's where your small one pound propane tank or adapter for a larger tank goes in. So this is a way to retrofit one of these stoves so it will run on propane. And I think that's exactly what I'm going to do to this one. So the way it works, get rid of that for now, watch those. Here's the way it works. This slides in just like any other V2, like so, as you can see. So it fits in there. I concentrate a bit here. You'll find it's a little larger and it tends to, well, friction fit on the end. But that's okay because the original generator tube is not airtight either. Now the only other thing you've got to watch out for, however, is this is propane. Oh, I am making quite the mess here. This is propane. So you see that little spring that has to hook around the edge of the stove. Fortunately it misses the grate that the pots sit on. But that has to sit there and it keeps it from falling out. That's all. But look at that. That's an over 50 year old stove that I've now, within a minute, converted to propane. So the funny thing is there, stow this away, I can't say this will last another 50 years, but for 20 bucks, actually $17.95 at a great company called Princess Auto up in Canada. You can definitely get them off many different sites, probably Amazon even, in the States. But look at that. I now have a spare stove running on propane for the big car camping trips. Because actually, I haven't really much gone into my car camping gear which is a totally different deal than the uh, the bushcraft gear and the uh, lightweight hiking stuff. There's a fair bit of overlap, but you know, there's sometimes you just want to take the the big tent and you know, maybe a little utility trailer or a tent trailer or whatever and just hang out with lakes of friends for a long weekend. That is now this has been repurposed as So, boo to Coleman. Yay to Mr. Heater. 
thank you very much. Yay to Princess Auto. Great store for discount stuff and little odds and ends and little cast iron frying pans and so on. But yeah, so there's a slightly happy ending to this story after all, even though that tank or that generator repair didn't work. I'm going to probably save that generator for my other stove as a spare part and uh, maybe not worry about the fuel tank. Who knows? If I change my mind, you'll see another video on it. But that's been another video from Alberta Bushcrafter. I want to thank you very much for watching. My name is Dean. Take care and good day.